Good. I like that. Um, you mentioned a few things about treatment, but let's go over that a little bit more. So there have been a few treatments that have been recently FDA approved yeah. um, over the last year. Tell us a little bit about those. Yes. So there's one that's called Pitolizum, which is uh, working. So most of the drug, first I, I, I should mention the drugs that we have right now that work on narcolepsy, they're pretty much at, of three classes. One of them is stimulants, like it's a little bit like amphetamine uh, or modafinil, and they mostly work on dopamine, a, a chemical called dopamine. Then there are ant antidepressants, and they mostly work on norepinephrine and serotonin, and they work on cataplexy, so they are not used as much for idiopathic hypersomnia, even so sometimes it can be beneficial. And then there is Xyrem that helps people to sleep at night. And clearly this drug sometimes can help, idiopathic hypersomnia or narcolepsy without cataplexy. But as you see, they work on, on dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin for antidepressant. And for GHB, it's probably GABA. And uh, these new drugs that are coming, one of them is called Sonosi, which is uh, working both on norepinephrine and dopamine. So it's a little bit different than modafinil. And it's, it seems to be, it's, it's it's still in the same class of drugs, how it works than, than the stimulants, but it seems to be better, more effective than, than modafinil without having the big problem of amphetamines that are kind of too strong. So definitely, I think it's a drug that's helping, that will help more patients uh, than the traditional drug. Uh, then there is a new drug that works completely differently, that works on histamine. You all have been taking antihistamine and you all know for, for uh, allergy, and you all know that it makes you sleep. So this drug does the opposite in the brains, but it doesn't make your allergy worse, but it makes you more awake, and uh, it works that's completely differently. And that's pitolizant. The uh, so general feeling of the drug is that it's, it's, a, it's a drug that helps to stay awake and reduce also cataplexy if you have cataplexy. It's, but it's certainly not like a curative compound. You know, it, it can help some patients. And I suspect it will also help a lot of patients with idiopathic hypersomnia. Uh, and uh, we just need to use it more to really understand better which patient will benefit. But the big advantage of it is it clearly is different. It doesn't work the same way as amphetamines and all this other drug. So I think we have already two new, completely new drugs. And then finally, of course, uh, most exciting for me is that there is this new drugs uh, that are coming uh, that seems to be able to replace orexin hypocretin, uh, which basically are, could replace what's missing in narcolepsy type one. And it seems to be very spectacular in patients with narcolepsy type one. It really kind of makes them completely awake. I mean, there's one, one study that was done, nothing, nothing that has been tried worked so well. So there is a study where they have taken patients with narcolepsy type one, and they use a test called the maintenance of, of wakefulness test, which you know, so an horrible, it's a torture for narcolepsy. You ask them to stay awake for 40 minutes, four times a day. A patient with narcolepsy basically can't even stay for three minutes. I mean, in the dark room like this, you tell them stay awake. I mean, that's just against the nature of, of narcolepsy patients, they fall asleep in two minutes. After the drugs, they could stay awake for 40 minutes, the entire time of the test. Nothing that I've seen ever has been able to do that. So, th so that's a big hope for patients with narcolepsy, type in, one. In clinic, it's just starting right now, right? The clinical trials in the US yeah. are just starting. Yes. And, and the good thing is that there is another, it worked also in people with idiopathic hypersomnia or sleep apnea, for example, you know, people with sleep apnea sometimes are tired and we can't really get them back to normal. And we don't really know why, but it's clearly not due to the lack of orexin, but it still made them more awake as well. So it works also in normal people. So I think it could very well help a lot, you know, patients with idiopathic hypersomnia or narcolepsy type two. You know, it's not because it's not the cause of the problem, it's that it's not effective, you know, I mean, we use drugs, you know, for, for pain, you know, like if you have pain, you take opioids or anti-inflammatory and sometimes they work even if you don't have an abnormality in the opioid system. I mean, it's, right. there is symptomatic treatment. So uh, it, 
I think that there's big hope that this will make a big difference. And you're right. So clinical trials have, are being started. Unfortunately, they were interrupted because of the COVID-19, we, we can't do anything. Uh, to, everything was stopped. And, um, but I think they will restart as soon as, as we are done. I mean, for us, since Stanford asked for a lot of paperwork, <laughs> it just gave us more time to do the paperwork to start and the trial. If, if people want to look for clinical trials, clinicaltrials.gov is a good place to look and search for narcolepsy and get more yes. information because it is a great way. Unless we have people that are willing to participate in clinical trials, we can't get new treatments. Um, yes, you're and so right. We do and and I, I like to say what's a little tough about clinical trials, of course, is that first you may be on placebo. So, you know, often, always you have one arm where it's placebo and one arm where it's active. And the second thing that can be very frustrating is that it may work great, but then after you can't have the drug, they will tell you, I'm sorry, we need to wait until it's approved. So sometimes it can be almost like a, a taste of what it's going to be, and then you can't continue. But still, I think if we don't have anyone, you know, doing this kind of studies, then it will never be available to anyone. So right. um, that's why I'm hoping that it will happen during the summer because you know the summer is a good time, for example, for for students that are already in college, or it's easier for people to take some time off, you know, because since they have to stop their medication, uh, it's easier for people to to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely, if you can, that's a good thing that you can help to advance science and. We always are looking, I mean, it's just exciting that we have clinical trials finally in the narcolepsy space. So um, Project Sleep will hopefully get some more information out to you about what the opportunities are. But yeah, right now, not so much. Um, <laughs> we can't be recruiting for clinical trials at this moment, but um, please keep it in mind. Um, 